This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to every single one of you, including Larry Bailey, Michelle Sergio, Miss Music Teacher, and new patrons, Preston and Carlos. Welcome. Coming up on DTNS, Apple announced its mixed reality set. Who is it for? Who will pay the $3,500 for it? Plus new Macs and new OS specs. We got it all from WWDC. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, June 5th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from as yet an unnamed studio, I'm Sarah Lane. And from the very edge of Atlanta, I'm Nika Monfort. And from a little farther out from the suburbs of Atlanta, <laughs> I'm Terrence Gaines. <laughs> And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, we got WWDC to get to. So uh, let's get right through the other non-Apple news, the quick hits. Google has expanded its beta support for pass keys from standard Google accounts to include Google Workspace, meaning that companies and employees can now use the more convenient and secure option instead of passwords. Workspace administrators will have to enable it in each company, and then a pass key uses a public key cryptography and a device's own biometric security to log a user in, meaning that no password can be intercepted or taken from a database. Your login is as secure as you have made your phone or your laptop. Following Reddit's move to charge third-party apps fees for API access, several subreddits, including r slash videos, r slash reaction gifts, and r slash life pro tips, will set their communities to private for 48 hours starting on June 12th as a protest against the fees. Several hundred subreddits will participate. Reddit says its pricing is 24 cents per thousand API calls, and it thinks that should equate to less than a dollar per user per month if it's properly configured. Uh, but one of the uh, third-party app developers, Apollo, has estimated it would cost them $2.50 per user per month, and other third-party developers have made similar estimates for their apps. Amazon announced it plans to digitize or bring online 10 million small businesses in India by 2025, estimated to generate $20 billion in export money. That would be up from around 4 million small businesses and 5 billion in exports to date. The company launched an app in India back in 2013, offering some shopping options in several local languages. Uh, Amazon also partnered with the India Post and Indian Railways to create its delivery network in the country and partnered with some neighborhood shops to provide e-commerce services. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, a.k.a. the SEC, has filed a lawsuit alleging that crypto exchange Binance, you know, one of the big ones up there with Coinbase, has operated illegally in the United States. Among the allegations are that Binance did not implement controls on market manipulation, did not properly register itself as a broker-dealer exchange clearing agency. Binance.us is not suffering these allegations and operate separately from the rest of Binance. But the SEC alleges that Binance encouraged investors to bypass the controls that were meant to keep them from using the international version. Sony poured a little cold water on speculation that it's going to move into cloud gaming soon. CEO Kenichiro Yoshida told the Financial Times that cloud gaming technical difficulties are high. He cited cost and latency as the biggest issues, but never say never to the cloud. Sony mm -hmm. plans to take on those challenges, and Yoshida said that the PlayStation division will study various options for streaming games, such as using its own AI tool, GT Sophie. Sony's been out this a while. Uh, you might recall it acquired cloud gaming company Gaikai back in 2012. Then technology from OnLive also got acquired, and then Sony launched its own cloud gaming subscription service in 2014 that's now integrated with PS Plus Premium. They're still trying to work it out. Good luck, Sony. Good luck. Well, Apple finally did it. They announced a mixed reality headset and as it was a you one more guessed, thing. <laughs> it wasn't. They even used the one more thing. Yeah, I know. Yes. They, they yes. hadn't trotted that out in a while, had they? No. Uh, at, Sarah, of course, you called it. It was the Apple Vision Pro. No, none of us called that. That was a big surprise. But, I, did, uh, I did not. I did not call it. I, I. I don't hate the name, but no, I. I. I had no insider information on what it was. Yeah, no, none of us did. Uh, I, I actually like the name Apple Vision Pro running on the Vision OS. Uh, maybe they'll get a lawsuit from Marvel. I don't know. All these reality yeah. OS leaks uh, were false flags in that. They, they were. They were all. They were all wrong. 
It looks like Google well, it looks like goggles. Uh, these these are like ski goggles. They let you see the world around you. Uh, also projects a picture of your eyes onto the front of the headset. So they're not clear. They're, there's there's circuitry between you and the outside world, but the outside world sees your eyes redone on LEDs on the outside. Uh, no controller. That could be one of the impressive parts of this, just eye and hand tracking controls. And to keep the weight down, power comes from either plugging it in or connecting it to a two-hour battery pack that'll come with it. Its use cases were all providing gigantic screens. Uh, so they showed productivity, uh, doing video conferencing, surfing the web, using Microsoft Office, and entertainment movies, video games, etc. Apple calls this spatial computing because you're just turning the world around you into a place for you to set big 2D windows. Spec-wise, it has 12 cameras, five sensors, six mics, runs on an M2 chip, as well as a new chip called the R1 that does a lot of the spatial computing processing. Has one physical control, a digital crown, uh, and 23 million pixels, Zeiss lenses to do your vision correction. They they snap in magnetically. And a wonderful $3,500 price coming next year, early next year. Uh, Terrence, your best guest, who is this for? Uh, that is a good question. Maybe um, Apple maybe jumped on the idea of the remote person that wants a more freeing experience while they're working remote to be able to, you know, they mentioned uh, Bluetooth accessories like a magic keyboard, maybe a mouse to where you want to feel more free in your environment, but still be fully engaged in your remote work. I'm assuming that's what's for on the onset. Now, later, as maybe third party developers get on, maybe they'll jump into entertainment like NFL, NBA, NHL, uh, MLB, being able to sit courtside, things like that. But right now, I think it's for remote work that people want to get things done, but still want to feel kind of free in their environment. Yeah, they did show ESPN uh, doing basketball games where you can like look down on top of the court and stuff because Disney is going to be available on this from from day one. I look at that price and I think this is a developer's edition. Nika, uh, does, does it strike you as that? It, it actually, it does. I think the biggest thing is, I think Apple was really trying to separate themselves from some of the other AR, VR headsets similar to Oculus because in most of those instances, it's all about entertainment. It's all about fun. And Apple took a completely different approach to this and put it in the way of productivity for the working professional. I think there are some use cases for fun, but they packaged it as a workspace type of of environment. So I think they really did it to separate themselves from other um, AR, VR type uh, products. So that means I won't get to see TikTok videos of people running into walls <laughs> because they're I mean, you using know, it for You work. can run a browser <laughs> in there. Yeah. yeah, you can run a browser in there. But I, They yeah, showed but that immersive you, thing where you can block mm -hmm. out the rest of the world. But when people came close to you, those people showed up so you knew they were there. Mm -hmm. I imagine they could do the same with the wall. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm, I am I don't want to be a naysayer because I was very excited about this. I love VR. Um, I'm, I'm pretty enthusiastic about... Um, uh, certain MetaQuest features, particularly for fitness. And I just kept waiting. I just kept waiting for Apple to say, and here's the, here's the real play is Apple that fitness. now, yeah, you, you know, you, oh. you, you only oh, need a five by five it. little area and uh -huh. you know, your world is instead, it was a lot of like, these sort of beautiful fake, but beautiful, you know, uh, apartments that people are living in, but then they're wearing the goggles and you kind of go like, this seems very dystopian. Now, uh, you might say dystopian, but cool. And I would agree with that. But there was something about it that just made me feel like, oh, yeah, productivity. That's going to appeal to a lot of folks, but not to the masses, not to the masses. Yeah. The, you're not going to sell a $3,500 piece of gadgetry you know to like most people given that you're like you can watch an immersive basketball game it just no people want more like real world things you and i think so honestly i think it was implied because they kept mentioning you know working natively with um um apple um uh, apps that you have on your device mm -hmm. so i yeah. think they really were implying that mm -hmm. you could use this 
as a immersive, like interactive, like you're physically in your phone type of experience. That's kind of what I gathered from it. And again, like I said before, I think they wanted to put a clear distinction between what other people are doing and what they're doing. I think that's why they highlighted the productivity aspects of it, but also gave you the idea that you could use this in a variety of scenarios, but I don't think they wanted it visually to the masses that, oh, this is just for fun, this is just for entertainment, but subtly saying, you know, you can use your your iPhone apps uh, on this device. So I really think they took more of a PR kind of approach to this announcement rather than a, you know, consumer like type yeah. focus. No. I think you're right, Nika. That 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 was one of the things I was wondering is why are you announcing it now? When when they announced that it isn't coming out until early next year and they gave you this really high price this far in advance, which they didn't have to do. They could have just let you let you swing on that. Apple's done it before. Uh, why announce it now? Why announce it at WWDC where they don't traditionally announce hardware? They've done it before, but they don't always. And I think it's because a lot of the scuttlebutt before this came out was that some people in Apple thought it was too soon to announce it. And I think the yeah. bet is let's call it a pro so that we can put out a cheaper one later and mm -hmm. let's make this pitch to developers who will spend $3,500. $3,500 is exactly what HoloLens and all these others are when they have their developers edition. Let's make the pitch to developers at WWDC to say, you should start making stuff for this now so that when it comes out and then when we put the cheaper one out later, there'll be lots of apps. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking with the Pro uh, Vision Pro. Why they call it the Vision Pro out the gate? Maybe alluding to the fact that there is a Vision Light vision or a SE. Vision Regular. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. To where it's less functionality, you know, maybe strips away some of the functionality, things of that nature to where, like you mentioned, Tom, you know, this is going to the developers. So they're going to announce the higher one up uh, um, earlier and then let the developer side how this thing works outside of native, native apps. Because the hardware is impressive. Yes. They, they don't have to they don't have to talk about field of view. That pass through is really good. Again, a lot of it, a lot of proofs in the pudding of how well it actually works. But Apple has a good track record of making this stuff work. If they've got that lag and latency down to where this is as good as your vision, so there's no nausea, there's none, none of that weirdness that you get with VR. If they have cracked all that, then the big problems are price and utilization, and well, those and, are the and, weaknesses and, I saw. I don't know, battery life also. Uh, that works. too, that too. Yeah, no, that two, is the third two, one. You're, two you're hours right. on a, uh -huh. you know, a battery pack that has to be on your, you know, ugly, the headset or on your tail. person otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it you reminds know, it, me and, of space, you know, when they do the space walks, they have like the hoses connected. <laughs> and I was yes. wondering if they were ever going to address it because in all of the images they had it connected, I'm just like, this is so visually unattractive. Mm -hmm. And Apple is known for visually stunning devices. And I'm like, this little hook in the back is just, oh. and the thing slid I'm in sorry. your pocket. I'm just I'm like, sorry. no. Anika, you mean the supple woven cable? Is that right? Yes. <laughs> supple and woven. Yes. Um, <sighs> lovely as it is this does again kind of going back to your point tom of you know this is a if you're a developer you're probably not you know trying to like swing a golf club you know that that's not what you're doing with this device so the whole idea of being wired or being wireless for a pretty short amount of time um is not the end of the world for consumers who want to have fun, Nika, like you said, you know, the, the meta folks have been, you know, touting the, the fun aspect of VR for a while. And I, I'm in the agreement that it can be really fun. Uh, you know, if you find if you find the app that works for you, you do not want to be wired and you want more than two hours mm -hmm. battery life. You know, yep. so like neither of those things are, are good scenarios. And that I, I, you know, if I were a fly on the wall, I would assume that Apple was like, you know what? We said we're going to announce this thing. Let's just announce it. And we're just going to kind of gloss over the fact that this is actually not extremely, um, uh, you know, a mobile immersive experience, even though that's what we're touting it as. Well, it and looks, I honestly thought it was going to be a one more thing, but I thought one more thing in October. Yeah. I didn't think one more thing Early next in June. Mm -hmm. It just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. 
Uh, but let's leave this on a positive. My positives are that the eye tracking, where you just look at something to be able to select it, and then you just pinch to click, no need for controllers. I, I, I believe Apple make that work really well because they're good at that sort of thing. That is impressive. Uh, Terrence, it was you, very slick. You got a positive? Uh, definitely like the um, the optic um, uh, verification. I forget the actual. Oh yeah, term. optic ID. Optic ID. Optic yeah. ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made a joke that uh, Apple has now. They have the thumbprint. Now they have your eyes, and now they, it, what, they have your face. <laughs> Now they have your eyes, so all your biometrics are belong to us now. So, but all but, on device and, and it's all on device so and them. it's secure. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's what I, that's the point I was getting at. It's secure, yeah, yeah. even though they're adding all the biometrics. Nika, your last positive. I have to co-sign with you, Tom. I think the eye tracking and the finger click, it was just so slick, and I was like, it was when the per the woman who was doing on the couch, it was like a, a very slight movement. And the fact that you can look at the web browser and the fact that it will, yeah. you know, It'll you can just, just look at it. Just track it. And yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing was having the physical world come to this spatial world where you can use your physical trackpad or your keyboard right. yeah, and yeah. type directly into this you know vision world i just thought it was so slick the way that they have this running so i'm i'm intrigued by it i have to say you know not only as a developer but also as a fan of apple it's just the eye tracking the finger click and the visual the virtual the physical world to the vision world interaction it was just really seamless and slick i mean when you compare it to a six thousand dollar monitor suddenly it actually starts to make more sense so it kind of depends yeah. on how you look at mm -hmm. it sarah mm -hmm. your last positive last positive uh is probably the fact that although i was hoping this was going to be a little sleeker um than the vr headsets that we're used to it is slimmer um, and I think the more we go in that direction, the more, uh, this is going to be something that people say, yeah, I could put this on my face, like sunglasses, you know, it's, it's sort of that yeah, Google yeah. glass, you know, conversation that we had many years ago, but it is, it's nice. It's nice looking. The hardware is really nice looking. All right, before we get to the operating systems, which is usually what we expect at WWDC, Apple announced some other new hardware, a 15-inch MacBook Air starting at $1,299, a price drop for the M2 13-inch MacBook Air down $100 to $1099, new Mac Studios coming with the M2 Max chip, as well as a brand new chip, the M2 Ultra. Uh, the Studio starts at $1,999. That's with the Max, not the new Ultra. And that M2 Ultra is also powering a new Mac Pro. And that finishes the transition off Intel. Everything is available with Apple Silicon now. And the new Mac Pro starts at $6,999 with the cheese grater look. Nika, any of these appeal to you? I'm going to have to say no. I think I'm I think I'm all set with my current M2. Yeah. <laughs> Terrence, what about you? Um, I might be attracted to one of the older, uh, maybe like an M1 Air uh, for, for the missus. She's got an Intel 2019 MacBook Air. And I think she's... Well, her stuff on her computer says she's ready for an upgrade. I say delete all that stuff and you can last a couple <laughs> more years. But, you know, I'm not the CFO of the family. So <laughs> uh, I don't know. Six Gen 4 PCI expansion slots on an Apple Mac Pro. Did that turn your head, Sarah? It did. Uh, I've never <laughs> I, it, it, it turned my head for sure. Um, Eight and Thunderbolt ports? I mean, which I don't need, not no. personally. I mean, I, I'd love to need them, uh, figure out a way to use something like that. But just kind of just having that robust machine that, you know, the Mac Pro folks um, used to love. And, and I know many Mac Pro folks felt like they were left in the lurch for the last decade, really, you know, besides some, you know, small um, incremental things. Um, I also like the cheese grater look. Bring it back. Yeah. Let's let's do this. 24 4K camera feeds in real time, encoded in real time. Wow. I, this is a beast. Yeah. I know it's yeah, $7,000. Exactly. That's why I'm like, I can't use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to be creative enough to use yeah. that, but I love the fact that that is what is being offered to folks. Less that, than the price know, of two That's what the pros. pro line should be. <laughs> All right, folks, yeah. if you have a thought about this or any of the hardware, be sure to send us an email. We'd love to hear about it. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. 
The more traditional part of WWDC is the operating assistant announcements. And we got those two. iOS 17 has contact posters, bigger pictures of, of folks in your contact list. Uh, live voicemail is kind of fun. This is uh, something Google folks have had for a long time. Android folks have had this. Let's you see a transcription and pick up the phone before the message is done, if you want. Just like we did in the 80s with physical phones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you can leave a message on FaceTime now if you're calling somebody on FaceTime. Autocorrect has a bunch of improvements, supposed to get smarter. AirDrop now lets you bump to transfer contacts. Uh, you can make stickers out of your live photos. Something called standby mode really lets you use your phone. You turn it on its side and put it on a little stand and it can act like a smart screen. Any of these iOS 17 features catch anybody's attention? Terrence, you were saying this felt like a smaller update. Well, as far as the list of things that they announced compared yeah, yeah. to other years, definitely smaller, but uh, definitely fine tune in iOS 17 specifically. Um, I've done how to's on how the best way to transfer contacts and, you know, you got to jump through the way of airdrop and you got to make sure your airdrop uh, makes sure it's for everyone. And then you got to go through all these hoops just to be able to do the airdrop of the contacts. So the fact that now in iOS 17, it just lets you bump transfer automatically. That takes a couple of steps so to make it actually easier to share contacts. So that was the one that jumped out to me the most. Yeah. I, li I, I like the I, call screening thing because that, that's great on Android. Um, uh, speaking of calling, the idea that you can, someone's in the process of leaving you a message and you can say, no, 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 I'm here. I'm here. Doesn't that just hearken <laughs> yeah. back to the, you know, we all have answering machines, you know, where yeah. it was like, I just got home. I just got home. I'm here. I'm here. Hi. Hi. Uh, Gen Z you don't gets necessarily want to do that. Finally. Yeah, I don't know what right. our fragile egos, maybe some folks might be a little <laughs> butthurt. That, Are you screening me? <laughs> Are you screening me? <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you, you yeah, leave the you message. Were there, you would have picked up the call. Kids exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's, a, that's, I don't know. I guess it's another, it's a small, but, but a more seamless way to say, well, yeah, there might be a reason that like, I don't know, I was in the shower and now you're leaving me a message, but I really want to talk to you. So, you know, instead of like listening to the end of the voicemail and then calling you back, it's little things like that. I always appreciate. Well, we also got the new journal app, uh, mm. like uh, the ability to to take personalized suggestions based on what the phone knows about you. Again, not in the cloud, this is all on your device. And like, hey, would you would you like to write about your day or it looks like you had interesting travels? Uh, so people are into journaling like that. I'm I'm not. Uh, but but I know a lot of folks are, including my sister, so she might be willing to to pick this up. Nika, anything in iOS 17 stand out to you? Um, the stickers seem fun. Um, the live stickers, seems, yeah. The live stickers, yeah, that seems like a lot of fun. Um, but I have to say, um, following up on the journaling app, um, I would like to journal more, but I'm more of a paperless type of person. So I have physical yeah. journals, just stacks of them that are empty. I just bought them because they were pretty. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to really journal this year. Uh -huh. And, you know, you never get around to it. But my <laughs> phone, you know, I, I digitally type in just about everything. To-do list because I can strike them through. I can highlight them. I can do all these things. So the journaling app uh, for the paperless kind of person, um, i.e. me, I think that might I don't know. I'm going to try it out and see if it sticks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. Maybe we'll even do a live with it with the journal app <laughs> when it comes out. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I, I'm like you, Nika. I mean, I don't, I could not, well, I'm in a new, uh, location now, but, but even, you know, the last like five years of my life, I'd be like hard pressed to find a pen. <laughs> right. I don't know. I just type everything, you know, I, I rarely, you know, have Who to write pens? anything out. Yeah. So, so you, well, some people are like, we love pens. Um, but I, but I'm, I'm like you, I, you know, I prefer, I don't know, I guess less office clutter, but, um, yeah. the journaling aspect of things is really helpful for people. I know people who do that, not even, you know, because they're trying to like work through something bad in their life. It's just kind of a great way to start the day type thing. So I think yeah. that if Apple can make this part of the, you know, it's our ecosystem, but it's for your own you know, personal health, then I think, mm -hmm. you know, that that ties into a lot of, you know, what they're trying to do with the fitness app. 
Not a lot to talk about with the iPad OS 17. Uh, lock screen widgets, which a lot of people have wanted for a long time, so that's a big one. Uh, and better PDF handling, which I'm always skeptical on the promises of this, so I want to see it in person, but uh, it actually looked pretty cool at the ability to identify fields and do autofill uh, on the iPad. Works on scanned docs, too. You can have saved signatures and all of that. Uh, Mac OS Sonoma is the name of the next Mac OS because that's where Sarah is. So they wanted to make sure they named the next Mac OS after where she is. Oh, well, I'm in Sonoma time. County, Tom. Sonoma County well, is different Well, they didn't distinguish the whether it was Sonoma. the town or the county. It's just, no, they just it was, called it, it Sonoma. It's, uh, I am from Sonoma County, California, so that was very exciting. I got a big whoop over at my house for that. <laughs> uh, there's game mode to prioritize games, and in fact, they even uh, uh, brought on Kojima, uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut coming to Mac. Uh, they're always trying to push the gaming aspect of, of, of Macs. Uh, Apple TV-style screensavers led off the announcement, which made me feel like maybe they didn't have a lot to announce, but I felt like there was some some better stuff. Overlay options for video conferencing. Mm-hmm. Is going to be very upset about this because it's doing exactly what that uh, third-party app does and it works with any video conference so you can have yourself show up over a presentation screen or in a little bubble uh, you can make any site into a web app and add it to the dock uh, the, the site itself doesn't have to do anything in advance uh, lots of good private browsing features if you're using safari to to keep things private terrence anything else in here or any of that that you really liked um, I really wish they would have brought the what they call them the live interactive widgets to the iOS 17. So I got to wait a little bit longer to get them on my phone versus getting them on my iPad. Uh, they one did of the things let you take widgets from iPhone and iPad and put them on Mac OS. They just didn't do the the interactive part. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I want the interactive part on my actual phone version. So that, and then I noticed that QR codes still live back in the early 2010s, uh, maybe 20, 2008, 2009. I was big in the QR codes and people were like, those are stupid. But now with the TV OS, the actual, like if you're going to an hotel. And oh, you you're jumping connect, ahead. Yeah. But that was cool. I like that. Yeah. 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 So I see QR codes still live. And the other one was the continuity for uh, TV OS. So, um, that was the ones that I was uh, attracted to the most. I know that's not, like you said, that's not until the TV OS, the Apple <laughs> part, but uh, I was looking forward to those. Those jumped out to me at the, the most. Yeah, though there was a, there was some good stuff uh, with uh, AirPods uh, getting adaptive audio, so blending noise canceling and transparency. You don't have to choose; it can sort of know whether you're talking to somebody, hear that you start talking, uh, and adapt. CarPlay gets the ability for any iPhone in the car to share and control music, and like uh, Terrence just mentioned, Zoom and WebEx coming to Apple TV using continuity, so that your iPhone or your iPad can be the camera. Watch OS getting smart stacks on the home screen. So when you turn the crown, you can you can see various cards. Also new cycling and hiking features for watch. Uh, the addition of emotion logging to the health app. That'll be on iPhone too, but you can do it from the watch. And some interesting vision features that uses the watch to tell how close you are to a screen, uh, how often you are outside, which the amount of time you're outside actually helps reduce uh, myopia. So lots of interesting things, both uh, on the on the watch OS, TV OS, uh, and and Mac OS side. Last thoughts, Nika, about any of these other OS announcements today? Honestly, I think a lot of the OS announcements were afterthoughts to the big kahuna, which we've talked about already. There was some slick thing, um, like Terrence mentioned, with the AirPlay for hotels. I thought that was really cool. So I was like, okay, I, I'm Finally. into that. <laughs> um, and, and also, you know, using your Apple TV as, you know, a, a video conferencing, you know, type of thing where you can toggle between, you know, your phone and have your uh, FaceTime, you know, through your, your actual TV on Apple TV. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. There were some, some, you know, neat things kind of buried in there, but, you know, overall, I, you know, I don't, I don't see a whole, whole lot um, and maybe that's just because we're used to some really, you know, show stopper, show stopper things in uh, a new OS. But, you yeah. know, I think we're getting you know, to the point where there's there's just not that much you can do with the operating system. Sarah, yeah, it looks it, like they were struggling on getting some stuff for watch OS to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it always seems like, well, not just Apple announcements, but any announcement, you know, where a company is like, all right. We're going to talk for a couple of hours and let's start with audio. You go, okay, they're trying to get it out of the way. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but you know, but some of the CarPlay stuff appeals to me. I mean, CarPlay is something I use in my car every day. Um, and that being easier for, you know, if I have a passenger for us to, you know, be able to, um, it kind of plug and play our, our, our various stuff that's on our iOS devices, um, and make that easier. That's cool. Um, I'm into that. Uh, everything else felt like, uh, yeah, uh, help. Apple wants you to think of it as the company that cares about your health. Other companies do the same, but Apple really leaning into that, uh, especially with, with watchOS stuff. Um, so that's cool. And otherwise, yeah, I felt like it, it was it, it was filler before we were talking about a VR device. Yeah. I will say uh, I, I, I see Apple learned from Google and hardly mentioned AI at all. They mentioned machine learning. But they hardly mm. didn't say AI hardly at all, even though we know there's some AI baked in there. But Apple learned their lesson. It's like, yeah, nah, we're not going to be <laughs> parried, <laughs> parried, you know, say it AI yeah. 50 million times. Like I think it was yeah. Samsung or Google. I can't remember which one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I appreciated that they made the effort to tell me what kind. Is it a language model? Is it a machine learning model? Is it something else? And don't just throw AI out there because it's an right. empty buzzword. I, I right. actually, I actually like that quite a bit. Yeah, and most people think of AI these days as the generative text. They don't realize right. the scope and the expansiveness of what AI does. And I think if they were to mention it, they would get put in that small bubble of the small box of what the mainstream think AI is. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, that is going to wrap it up for us uh, on WWDC, right? I guess. I mean, I think, I think, you know, it was such a, it was, there was a lot that went into that, that show. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes we can think on it a little bit, uh, but, uh, we could not thank Nika Monford and Terrence Gaines more for being with us. Uh, we are the Apple announcement crew at this point. Uh, the Snob OS team knows what they're talking about. They love this stuff as much as we do, if not more. Um, so let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Nika, we'll start with you. Um, you can find me at Tech Savvy Diva on all of the social media platforms. And uh, you can also find me on Terrence and I's show, Snob OS, uh, by going over to snoboscast.com. And you can find me on the internet at Brother Tech. That's B R O T H A T E C H. Like Nika mentioned, we also do a Apple specific podcast at snoboscast.com. You can also find me at brothertech.com. And uh, we also do with Rob Dunwood and Tech Like Steph, who have been on the show before, uh, we do a technology podcast from a quote unquote different, i.e., black perspective with the Tech John, T E C H. J-A-W-N. Definitely check us out there. We'll be talking on both of these shows. We'll be talking a little bit more about Apple's WWDC announcement this week. Well, we're so, so pleased to have you with us today. Thank you again. No problem. No problem at all. Hey, patrons, uh, stick around. If you like the conversation we're having, uh, we're going to talk a little more about, you know, the announcement itself, how it went down, why they're making it now, that sort of thing on Good Day Internet. Stick around for that. You can also catch DTNS live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back again tomorrow with Allison Sheridan joining us. And I bet she has WWDC thoughts as well. Don't miss it. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Simon Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>